The title of our message is The Beauty of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. As we read from Genesis chapter 29, verse 16 to 18, it tells us in verse 16 that Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger, Rachel. Now it says that in the case of Leah, only she had tender eye, but Rachel was beautiful, all round, well favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve these seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. He said that Rachel had everything going for her. She was beautiful. She was well favored, good looking. And then Jacob went for her and said, this is the one I want. But Leah didn't have the benefits which Rachel had. She, she didn't have all the beauty of the physical. But the scripture tells us that the Lord helped Leah and arranged it that ultimately the first to be given to Jacob was Leah. That Laban, Laban now gave Leah to Jacob instead of Rachel when he served for seven years. Someone would blame Leah. We shouldn't blame Leah because she had nothing to do with it. She was brought in into the first position. That's what the scripture calls favor. She was favored. Who favored her? God. So when she saw, when God saw that she didn't have all the attraction, though she's the elder, the elder daughter, she is abandoned. And then the Lord helped her, and then they gave her to Jacob, and then Jacob served again for another seven years, and then he got what he wanted, Rachel. See, God is telling us that there is natural beauty. There is the beauty that comes from God, the spiritual beauty that God can beautify you, can change your life. Amen. Even if you don't have the natural endowment, natural things of this world that may attract people, God can make you attractive. God can make a way for you. That's the story of this great earlier. And then the scripture tells us in Genesis 29, verse 31 and 32, and when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, because Rachel was burying. He said, when the Lord saw that this woman, Leah, was even hated by the husband, he blessed her. He opened her womb. May the Lord bless you. Amen. May the Lord see your affliction. Amen. In the study. And Leah conceived and bare a son. And she called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction. Amen. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. The beauty of Christ. Christ beautify her. She was not beautiful physically, but she has been beautified by the word of God. Do you know that Jesus is so wonderful? That's why he says, great is the Lord, greatly to be praised. In the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation. You see, the word of God beautified people. He beautified this woman. This one that was hated, he changed her life. The Lord shall change your life. Amen. The Lord whom you have come to rely on in Bible revelation ministry, even the word of God, will change your life. Amen. He will beautify you. That's what he does. 
he is a specialist in it. Now, the scripture tells us in Genesis chapter 30, verse 1 and 2, And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. You see, God did this woman that was hated, Leah, he so beautified her that his sister envied her. This is positive envy because she wanted what Leah had. Richard was beautiful. He said, no, that's not, that cannot help me. I need a child. You see, the beauty of Christ is wonderful. He surpasses natural beauty. Though Rachel was beautiful, he said, the beauty of the sister, even the beauty that Christ beautified her, she was releasing babies upon babies, children upon children. Then the sister envied her. They shall envy you when the Lord finish with you. Amen. What the Lord shall do in your life shall provoke people to look for your God. Amen. Hallelujah. The beauty of Christ. He said the beauty of Christ surpasses the beauty of the natural. Though Rachel was beautiful naturally, but that's not enough. He cannot go that far. Couldn't give her what she wanted, but the Lord gave to Leah, who was not beautiful, much more than what the natural can do. In verse 2, and Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I God, God stand? Am I in the place of God? Who had withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? Don't you know that the fruit of the womb is the reward of the Lord? You don't know that? You see, many don't know that God reproduced things. He said in the beginning, be fruitful and multiply. That's why plants grow. That's why animals reproduce. He says, by the word of the Lord, he created all things. By the word of the Lord, he multiplied them. By the word of the Lord, he sustained them. And that is why God wants us to receive his word. There is a misplaced priority. This is the devil that did it, that changed our mind. Instead of the dual, we go to something else. That it is the Lord that changes things. Even if you don't have it naturally, the word of God can supply it for you. Amen. Jacob said to Rachel, Rachel, you don't know that it's the Lord God that changes lives. Isaac would have told Jacob, I'm a child of miracle. My mother, see what Abraham told me, my father told me that my mother was barren. You know that Sarah was barren? And that God made the barren to produce. And then he would say, Oh, Jacob, he would have told Jacob, Isaac told Jacob, that your mother was barren, Rebecca was barren. I entreated the Lord, and he gave me a double. You and Esau, he is the giver. He produces, he makes the barren to produce. Say, he said, Rachel, you are in my house. You don't understand that we everything I get, I have, I got it from God. He said, am I in the place of God? You see, today, many want to put humans in the place of God. Don't put your pastor in the place of God. Jacob said, am I in the place of God? You don't know the God I serve, the mighty God of Jacob is the word of God. The word that led me in all my journey and delivered me and gave me abundance. You see, the Lord God wants us to come to this understanding that his word is the truth. Where do we have the word today? Someone will say, where will I find this God? God that can change my life? It's in the Bible. The apostle said, don't say who's going to bring the word of God from heaven or go to the deep and bring him up again. The word is near you, even in your mouth. The word which we preach. We preach the word. He said, Richard, God gives prosperity. God gives fruitfulness. Now that 
change the mind of Richard. See, that's why we preach him. So though Jacob was angry, but he spoke the truth to her. And so this truth anchored in the heart of this woman, and then she worked on it. And then the scripture now tells us in Genesis chapter 30, verse 22 to 24, and God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. The God of the Bible shall remember you. All that your, your affliction, your problem shall be solved. Only believe. In verse 23, and she conceived and bare a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. Amen. Not Jacob, God. The Lord has taken away my reproach. The Lord shall take away your reproach. Yes. Everything that is mocking you and says, what can you do? The Lord shall change your life. Amen. And those who were mocking shall rejoice with you. Amen. In verse 24, and she called his name Joseph and said, the Lord shall add to me another son. You see, he gave me one, he gave me another one again. And another one, and another one. He keep adding because it's God that made things prosper. And so that's what God wants us to know, that Jesus is so beautiful. He beautified people. The natural beauty of Rachel could not give her a son. Jesus did. He gave her a son and beautified her life. You know, the son he gave to her, Joseph, was the same that all of them came under. And he fed them in Egypt. You see, everything you read in the Bible, they are true. You see, every child that came by God, whether it is Isaac, wonderful. Whether it is Jacob, wonderful. Whether it's Joseph, wonderful. What of Samson, wonderful. You think about it, these women were barren. What of Samuel, the great prophet, wonderful. Is it the firebrand John the Baptist, the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth? You see, God is saying to us that what God does is wonderful. Amen. And this word of God is given to us. He said, for God so loved the world. He gave us his word. Why did he do so? So that he would beautify our life. He would change our circumstances. What your brother, your sister, your mother, your husband, your wife cannot do for you, he would do it for you. You know, some people complain about their wife. And so my wife did not produce. That's not what Isaac did. Isaac entreated the Lord. And Rebecca reproduced. You see, some will blame the husband. and say, oh, the husband is not good. Why don't you speak to God? Why don't you come to God that changes things? You see, as children of God, we should be wise. We have this great God. This God that can beautify your home, beautify your children. He can change things. That's why we preach him. He's awesome. He's glorious. Hear what the psalmist spoke of him in Psalm 113, verse 7 to 9. <laughs> he raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the dung. He said the word of God can take a poor person who is broke and then take him up Amen. in an instant and lift him up and bring him out from the donkey that is from the low level to upper level it will change your life in an instant is what he's saying that this god whom we serve came to us to show us the way to be free that the way to be free is jesus Jesus set captives free. Amen. Jesus changes people. Yeah. And so even if you are low, you need Jesus. Okay. He can bring you out from that low level and bring you up. And then in verse 8, that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. Okay. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Amazing. What a God we serve. That's why God is calling every one of us to the Bible. Please return to Him. Say, if we return, the Lord 
will give us the former rain and the latter rain. There shall be showers of blessing. That's what we need. So the Lord changes condition, changes circumstance. And now, what he demands from us, what he requests from us, he says, my son, my daughter, give me your heart. Let your eyes observe my ways, thy soul. He wants us to give him our heart. Amen. Who? The word. Say so for 40 years, he was speaking to them in the wilderness. Though he fed them, though he gave them bread, he nurtured them in the wilderness, they would not let him in. And then he did not profit them. They enjoyed him outwardly, but he says, my son, let me in. They were having evil heart of unbelief. They didn't allow this living to enter them. Oh, may the living God enter inside us. Amen. He said, when the living God enter you, he will be making everything to work together for good for you. He beautified people's life. Think of it. All the great men you read of, great women in the Bible, they were low. But God changed their life. He made them great. The scripture has changed people, many people in this world before us. He has made them great. What are people like David? David was not ordinary. He says, when my father and mother forsook me, they left him. He was in the forest. And then the Lord brought him out. He said, he takes someone from the doors, from the dung he, he took David from the, where they rejected him. He anointed him and made him a king. The same is King David. He now sat with princes, sat with ruler. He made a covenant with David. He said, David, out of your house, I will come out. So Jesus came out from the family of David. Who made that possible? The word. The word of God enriched him. He took to the Bible. That's all David did. He embraced the word of God and the God of the Bible embraced him. May God embrace you. Amen. May we embrace the word of God so that he will do us good. Yeah. He says that no condition is permanent. No condition is too difficult for him. As we round up now, listen to what he did to a woman that we know of in Luke chapter 1. In case you said, my season is over. It's never over. Amen. In Luke chapter 1, verse 36, and behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she had also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called Barin. Says Mary, your cousin, the elderly woman who felt she felt her season is over. Are you thinking that way your season is over? You think that, oh no, my season over is past now. I don't have hope anymore. Listen to the scriptures. He says that woman in her old age conceived. Amen. By what means? By God, by the word of God. In verse 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. He said by this word of God, it changes things. Even if you were dead, anything died in you. He came to the grave of Lazarus and said, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. The dead came forth. The angel told Mary, when Mary said, how is this thing going to happen? I don't know any man. He says, look, that a woman you felt her time is over, her season is over. I was sent to her, the angel Gabriel said, that is God sent me. I'm a messenger. You know, we are all messengers. The angels messengers. We are messengers on earth. We deliver the word. He said, by a prophet, he sustained them. By a prophet, he blessed this woman. That the angels are fellow prophets. We are all prophets of the Bible. We speak of this wonderful word of God. He says that with him, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. What a beauty. He said that old woman is beautified. If you see how decorated Elizabeth is, Man. If you see how she's smiling, uh, you see her mouth is enlarged, Man. she's singing, there is none holy as our God, no one like our God. There's no one like our God. The God of the Bible shall bless you. It shall change your life. Only believe. 
that this beauty surpasses any natural beauty. Some trust in things they have naturally. He said, trust in the Lord. Come to this wonderful, amazing God. Jesus beautiful. Jesus beautiful. Jesus beautiful. All this was so beautiful. Jesus beautiful. Jesus beautiful. Jesus beautiful. All this was so beautiful. Beautiful. My God. It says that he beautified people's life. Then the person who was, who was um, mourning a crime before started singing. Yeah. What a beauty. The Lord shall beautify you. Yeah. The beauty of Christ yeah. is so amazing. He said, when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, it was like we were dreaming. Our mouth was filled with laughter. Yeah. The Lord God of the Bible shall fill your mouth with laughter. Yeah. We are going to pray. And so, Lord, beautify me. Yes, Lord. As you beautify Elijah, uh, ultimately you also beautify Rachel. Rachel discovered her natural beauty could not help her. She needed the same God that beautify her sister. Then you beautify her. Oh, Lord, beautify every one of us. Pray in Jesus' mighty name, Father, Almighty Father, Savior, Father, Savior Father, Eternal Father. Spirit. We are the word of God. Let the word of God be attraction. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Very powerful session. I'm sure somebody has been blessed. Amen. Blessed be the name. It is Christ who beautifies the beauty of Christ. It's what we beautify us this week in Jesus' name. Amen. We just quickly move.